Welcome to section 7 of Metabolism. In this section, we'll be discussing glycogen. Let's get started. This is the metabolic map provided in section 1 of Metabolism. In this video, we're focusing on glycogen, both the synthesis of glycogen, or glycogenesis, and the catabolism of glycogen, or glycogenolysis. The glycogen pathways are a little bit complex, so they haven't been fully included in this large overview map, but you can see them represented right here. Glycogen is a polymer of glucose. When glycogen is synthesized, it's called glycogenesis, which occurs during periods of rest. When it's broken down, it's called glycogenolysis, which occurs to meet the cell's immediate energetic needs. There are two types of bonds that form between glucose molecules, alpha-1,4 bonds and alpha-1,6 bonds. Let's pull up an image so you can see what I'm talking about. This is a detailed figure of glycogen metabolism, which can be found in section 7 of metabolism. The alpha-1,4 linkages can be seen right here. Notice that these bonds link glucose molecules together in a relatively linear pattern. The alpha-1,6 linkages, which can be seen right here, link glucose molecules together in a branched pattern. Okay, now let's focus on the pathway. From the figure, notice that the black arrows moving from the top of the image to the bottom represent glycogenolysis. The blue arrows going in the reverse direction represent glycogenesis. Notice also that next to the arrows are important enzymes, which you can see in red. Notice that some of these have a star next to them, for example, right here. Deficiencies of these enzymes with stars next to them result in glycogen storage diseases, which can be found at the bottom of the image right here. We'll talk more about glycogen storage diseases in a second, but this figure provides a good overview. Okay, let's talk about glycogenesis first. Glycogen is formed from glucose, and you can see each step of synthesis represented by a blue arrow and a corresponding enzyme. I'm not going to walk through the entire pathway, but notice that glycogen synthase forms glycogen first as a linear molecule, and then the branching enzyme creates alpha-1,6 linkages, causing the glycogen molecule to branch into a complex polymer of glucose, which you can see right here. Okay, now let's talk about glycogenolysis, which is much more high yield. Notice at the top of the image that glycogen can either be broken down by several enzymes into glucose, or it can be immediately turned into glucose from the enzyme alpha-1,4-glucosidase. A small amount of glycogen is inadvertently trapped by lysosomes in muscle and liver tissue, and this enzyme degrades the glycogen within lysosomes. As you can see from the figure, a deficiency of this enzyme results in Pompeii disease, or glycogen storage disease type 2. The names and corresponding types of glycogen storage diseases are not important. It's much more important to know the functions of the enzymes in this pathway and what symptoms would manifest as a result of the deficiency. This figure provides a good summary of the glycogen storage diseases and can be found in section 7 of metabolism. So Pompeii disease is caused by a deficiency of alpha-1,4 glucosidase. This enzyme is also sometimes called acid alpha glucosidase. As I just showed, the enzyme is present in lysosomes and is responsible for the catabolism of glycogen. A deficiency of the enzyme results in glycogen accumulation within the lysosomes. Accumulation of glycogen in the heart will cause cardiomegaly, accumulation in the liver will result in hepatomegaly, and accumulation in skeletal muscle tissue will result in muscle weakness or hypotonia. We'll discuss this in a second, but it's important to know that because the traditional way of metabolizing glycogen is unaffected, and because the gluconeogenic pathway is unaffected, these patients will have normal blood glucose levels. Pompeii disease can be remembered by the phrase, Pompeii breaks the pump. The pump refers to the heart. So Pompeii disease is the only glycogen storage disease that damages the heart. The four Ps that you can see in this phrase can also help you remember that the four is associated with alpha-1,4 glucosidase, which is the deficient enzyme. Okay, let's do a question. A six-month-old girl presents with developmental delay. Physical exam is significant for hepatomegaly and hypotonia. Her blood glucose level is normal. An EKG is significant for giant QRS complexes in all leads. A glycogen storage disease is suspected. What enzyme is most likely deficient? The most important part of this question is right here. An EKG is significant for giant QRS complexes in all leads. From physiology, you should know that the QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization. A larger voltage represents larger ventricles. In other words, the question stem is stating that this patient has cardiomegaly. 
Recall that the only glycogen storage disease that affects the heart is Pompe disease, or glycogen storage disease type 2, which we've been discussing. This is caused by a deficiency of alpha-1,4 glucosidase. From the map, we can see that alpha-1,4 glucosidase is responsible for breaking down glycogen in lysosomes. From the summary table, you can remember this disorder by the phrase Pompe breaks the pump. You can also see that this patient presented with many of the symptoms found in this table, including cardiomegaly. Okay, let's continue discussing the pathway. Most of the glycogen is not broken down by lysosomes. The alternative pathway shown in the figure is much more common. In this case, glycogen is first broken down by the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase. This enzyme cleaves the alpha-1,4 linkages between glucose molecules, and in the process, it liberates a molecule of glucose 1-phosphate, which you can see right here. Notice from the figure that the glycogen molecule started out with six red glucose molecules and six green glucose molecules. If you look at the next step in the pathway, you can see that the glycogen molecule now only has four red molecules on the left and four green molecules on the right. This is because glycogen phosphorylase will only cleave the alpha-1,4 linkages and its activity immediately comes to a halt four residues away from the alpha-1,6 bond. These glycogen structures with four glucose residues remaining on a branch are sometimes referred to as limit dextrins. So this results in four red molecules on the left side and four green molecules on the right side. Obviously, to end up with this result, the reaction must have occurred multiple times, liberating multiple molecules of glucose 1-phosphate. We obviously haven't showed that reaction occurring multiple times, but this figure is great for illustrating the limitations of glycogen phosphorylase. Also notice that the activity of glycogen phosphorylase is increased by calcium and AMP in muscle tissue, as well as cyclic AMP in liver tissue. Recall that cyclic AMP is increased by both glucagon and epinephrine. So we'll show both of these increasing the levels of cyclic AMP. It would make sense that when the body is starving, the levels of glucagon would be increased, resulting in increased cyclic AMP, which would increase glycogenolysis to provide more glucose for the body. It would also make sense that during a fight or flight response, epinephrine would be increased, resulting in increased cyclic AMP, which would then increase glycogenolysis to increase the amount of glucose available for the body. It would also make sense that the activity of glycogen phosphorylase would be increased by calcium and AMP in skeletal muscle tissue. Calcium is a marker of skeletal muscle contraction, and AMP is a marker of low energy. Notice that a deficiency of glycogen phosphorylase results in myocardial disease. This is also known as glycogen storage disease type 5. Myocardial disease is caused by a deficiency of glycogen phosphorylase, and this is only present in skeletal muscle tissue. A deficiency of this enzyme results in a decreased ability of skeletal muscle to break down glycogen, which means the muscle has a decreased ability to generate ATP during exercise. So, decreased ATP. The lack of energy results in muscle cramps, muscle weakness, exercise intolerance, and possibly even rhabdomyolysis. Because the liver is unaffected, these patients will have normal blood glucose levels. Myocardial disease can be remembered by the phrase, myocardial breaks the muscle. Okay, let's continue discussing the pathway. The next step in the pathway is catalyzed by one of the debranching enzymes, specifically glucanotransferase, which you can see right here. This cleaves the limit dextrins so that only one glucose residue remains, and in the process, transfers the cleaved molecule to another part of glycogen. Notice that three of the four glucose residues were transferred right here next to the four green glucose molecules. The next enzyme is also a debranching enzyme, specifically alpha-1,6-glucosidase, which you can see right here. This enzyme is responsible for cleaving the final glucose residue linked by the alpha-1,6 linkage. As you can see from the image, the final red glucose molecule right here is released in the form of glucose. Notice that a deficiency of alpha-1,6 glucosidase results in Cori disease. This is also known as glycogen storage disease type 3. So again, Cori disease is caused by a deficiency of alpha-1,6 glucosidase. This results in a decreased ability to break down the final branches of glycogen. As the non-functional glycogen accumulates in muscle, it results in hypotonia. As it accumulates in the liver, it results in hepatomegaly. 
Because glycogen can't be utilized to its maximum capacity, the cells become more easily starved of glucose and patients can develop hypoglycemia. The body compensates for this by increasing gluconeogenesis. The increased metabolism of fats to supply the gluconeogenic pathway with carbons results in ketoacidosis. This is a very unique finding among the glycogen storage diseases. Cori disease can be remembered with the phrase, Cori breaks the corner. If we look at the overview figure, we can see that alpha-1,6 glucosidase normally cleaves the last branching residue of glucose right here. In other words, this residue is kind of like the end or the corner of glycogen. So Cori breaks the corner. Okay, let's move on. Notice that at this point, we are left with a straight branch of glycogen right here. And this can be repeatedly broken down into glucose 1-phosphate, which you can see right here. I haven't included this enzyme in the figure because it's not as important, but it's another glycogen phosphorylase enzyme. The glucose 1-phosphate is then converted to glucose 6-phosphate by another relatively unimportant enzyme called phosphoglucomutase. Finally, this can be utilized by muscles in glycolysis, or it can be released into the blood by the liver by the enzyme glucose 6-phosphatase, which you can see right here. Notice that a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase results in von Guericke disease. This is also known as glycogen storage disease type 1. So again, von Guericke disease is caused by a deficiency of glucose 6-phosphatase. This results in a decreased ability of the liver to release glucose into the blood, which can cause severe hypoglycemia. This makes sense. The final step in both glycogenolysis and gluconeogenesis is defective. As metabolites accumulate in the liver, this results in hepatomegaly. The Cori cycle is also defective, which results in a lactic acidosis. Let's look at the figure of the Cori cycle to understand this process better. This figure provides an overview of the Cori cycle and can be found in section 7 of metabolism. Notice that lactate is produced by the muscle from anaerobic metabolism and that the lactate can then travel to the liver where it can be converted back into glucose through gluconeogenesis. The glucose can then go back to the muscle to provide it with additional energy. In von Guericke disease, the final step in gluconeogenesis, which produces glucose, is defective. So this step right here. This means the lactate cannot be reused, so it accumulates in the blood, resulting in a lactic acidosis. Von Guericke disease can be remembered by the phrase Guericke breaks gluconeogenesis. Notice that the G in Guericke is associated with the G in gluconeogenesis. Okay, let's do a question. A two-year-old boy presents with growth failure and skeletal muscle wasting after a syncopal episode. Physical exam is significant for hepatomegaly. Labs reveal hypoglycemia and a mild ketoacidosis. A muscle biopsy reveals enlarged cells containing periodic acid shift positive material. The enzyme that is most likely deficient performs what important function? Notice from the question stem that this patient has hepatomegaly, hypoglycemia, and a mild ketoacidosis. The PAS stain identifies glycogen and is useful in identifying glycogen storage diseases. Recall that a ketoacidosis is unique to Cori disease, or glycogen storage disease type 3. This is due to a defective alpha-1,6 glucosidase enzyme. From the map, we can see alpha-1,6 glucosidase right here. So in answer to the question, this enzyme is responsible for breaking down the last branched glucose residue in glycogen right here. From this summary table, we can see that Cori disease results in glycogen accumulation, which causes hepatomegaly and hypotonia. The decreased mobilization of glycogen explains the hypoglycemia. The increased activity of gluconeogenesis and the metabolism of fatty acids explains the ketoacidosis. You can remember this disorder with the phrase, Cori breaks the corner. As a summary, notice that Cori disease and von Guericke disease are the two glycogen storage diseases that result in hypoglycemia. Von Guericke disease results in a lactic acidosis, and Cori disease results in a ketoacidosis. Pompe disease and McCardell disease both have normal blood glucose levels. And finally, Pompe disease affects the heart, and McCardell disease only affects skeletal muscle tissue.